in the fenced in area where the corn's planted. It's working. Oh, here they come. Hi. Hi, Foo Foo. Oh. She's no longer broody. Ah, she poked my phone. That was rude. All right, all right, all right. Good gravy. Hello, boys. This is the, they've been outside for about a week now. Will they go inside for bedtime and when it gets too hot in the middle of the day, we'll put them in. Besides that, they stay outside. And here's little Phelan, just fitting right in. He's technically sold, but his owner is come on some hard times. And so he's going to stay with us for a few weeks until she decides whether she actually wants him or not. And there's everyone else. All right, it's time for the nighttime changing. They are Dory. Dory, Dory, nasty chickies. How much have they eaten already, Mom? They have eaten, like, almost a, probably really only half a quart. Probably half a quart, and they've only been this here for, what, down. two days? This is the end of their second day here. <sighs> we got them on Monday. And it's Wednesday, my dudes. They like that thing. We might have to do something with it. <laughs> maybe wash it. Maybe wash it. All right, here we go. We're all clean. Have a good night. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'm coming as soon as I finish Dad and Trevor's. Okay. Well, we're five days old. How do we feel about that? Huh? How do we all feel? It's time to change their bedding. Look at the feathers they're getting. You see that? Look at those little feathers. On those ones. Okay, I'll clean. But... This little guy, hopefully guy, has a clogged little butt. You have to keep their vents clean and his is clogged. So we gotta clean it. All right guys, it is Friday, June 4th, 5th, 5th. And say hello boys. These guys have been going outside during the days for over a week now and they seem to really enjoy it because the girls are back in their run out stall and <clears throat> I think I swallowed a bug. That's been going really good too. I think they enjoy it. <laughs> so it's not been like crazy hot yet. It's been like it's gotten in like the 80s. So when it gets too hot we do bring them in. Oh, hey babies. Okay, that's Hunter. Where are you at? Crocodile. And Bindi's over there. Hi, Red. And then here's Miss Safira. She's been, she's kind of skinny, so. And she's been very lethargic, so we're going to um, get her some. I don't know. Worm. W wormer. Yeah, we're gonna get some wormer for her from our bed. Cause I worried. I worried about you. Here's Mr. Parker. Um, here's maybe some TMI, but Parker is a buckling. And typically bucklings aren't capable of breeding until they're eight weeks old at the earliest. Usually like 10 to 13 is when you have to really start worrying about them. But Parker is six weeks old. Hi, Fru Fru, hello. She just like pecked the crap out of me yesterday. Doesn't hurt, but it scared me. I pet you. Oh. Anyway, back to Parker. Back to Dee's little boy. Anyway. He was looking like he was ready to breed someone, and I'll leave it at that. And Irish, we had a day, oh, it's just too loud in here to say anything. 
Okay, so why am I out here in the first place is to give Zoe a bath. Zoe's our old girl. She is 11 years old, and she um, we just noticed she was acting really itchy, and so we're like, oh, maybe she just is itchy. But we checked today, and she actually has lice, which means that probably everyone in her pen has lice because that's how lice works. So we gave everyone shots to get rid of the lice. Ivermec is what we used and uh, we're going to but we don't see any lice on anyone else so we don't see any lice on anyone else just Zoe so Zoe is getting a bath so the lice will die because of the shot we gave her a shot of Ivermec it's a parasite wormer and um, so she's getting a bath she's gonna love it so much so earlier today I knew I wanted to give her a bath, so I put out some buckets of water so they would heat up, because I think it's just really rude, no matter how hot it is, to just spray down any of your animals with just blazing cold water. Blazing cold? Freezing cold. <laughs> freezing cold water. I just think that that is mean. I mean, I wouldn't want that to happen to me. So, that's what I'm doing, and I'll show you as much as I can, because I'm doing it by myself. <laughs> I don't know if you can see, but look at how beautiful that shampoo is. It's purple. So I'm gonna just wet her down with this water, which is nice and warmish, not too warm. That'd also be awful. And, uh, and then we're gonna scrub her up with the shampoo and then rinse her off again. Hopefully I have enough water for that. I also uh, scrubbed out all these buckets today. Hi, Lavender. Look at that fluffy lady. Lavender, if you don't know, is the mother to at least two of the black mambas. Fun fact. Okay, here's story time about Zoe. So, uh, Zoe was born in 2009. That was our second year of having babies born on our farm. And Zoe was out of... Um, a goat named Sicily, who was Trevor's goat, and we loved her dearly. And um, Zoe was a single baby, so she got all the attention, and my little sister just fell in love with her, and so she bought her from us so that she could then have stake in the goat herd. Zoe was born in 2009, and she was showed her whole life in 4-H and also in um, ADGA shows and we went to the AGS. So AGS is American Goat Society and ADGA is the American Dairy Goat Association. Zoe did very well showing she um, won first place a ton and Erica showed in 4-H and she was great. She, er, well, Erica really lucked out because Zoe, you just had to walk her around and she'd set herself up. When you're showing goats, the goat has to have its feet placed under them in a certain way. And Zoe would just do it automatically without being taught or practicing or anything. So my sister really lucked out. A shout out to you, Erica. <laughs> but Erica got very good. I mean, when she started, she was nine. So you can't really expect a nine year old to know exactly what to do but so Zoe did really well so therefore Erica did very well and it was very fun and then um, I think Zoe's had I'll have to check but she's had over 20 babies for us and she's a very good mom so now she's just the the herd queen she is the boss and uh, but she's also everyone's friend so if we have a new goat that has to be introduced to the herd Zoe's always nice to them and she will let them eat from her feed pail and just is very sweet to everyone, doesn't fight anyone, but is gets what she wants. Last year at our county fair, which is a week long big deal to us, we love it, um, the county fair has an open ADGA um, sanctioned goat show. But in order to be sanctioned, you have to have 10 goats in the doe show. And so we brought Zoe just so that we would make those 10 goats. And she was not in milk. Typically you have to show a goat 
that has an udder and is in milk. And Zoe hadn't had a baby that year, so she was not in milk. So, but we showed her and we brought her just in case we needed the, her as our 10th goat so that it could count as a sanctioned show. There's lots of other rules to showing goats, which I could totally talk about if anyone was interested. Um, and so we took Zoe in and the judge is like, she's not in Utter. She, and we're like, no, she's 10 years old and she did not have a baby this year. But So basically the judge was like, oh, okay, yeah, you brought her in to get numbers. And so, but the more she looked at her, the more she just really, really, really liked her. And so when it came to placing everyone, of course Zoe won her age class because I think she was the only one in it. But then all of the age classes, all the first places from the yearling milkers, the two-year-olds, three-year-olds, four-year-olds, five-year-olds, and then there's typically like a six and above. All the winners from those classes all lined up and you pick a first place and a second place. So your first place is your grand champion, your second place is your reserve grand champion. And Party won, who we were also showing, she won grand champion because she's perfect. And, but then she picked Zoe as the reserve grand champion and we were just blown away. I was moved to tears because it was Erica's last fair and she was showing her, fair, her very first goat ever. So from a nine year old to a 19 year old. Erica showed Zoe in the fair every single year, and her first year, she won first place in her age class, and then in the last year, Zoe won reserve grand champion over all of the Nigerian dwarfs. So it was very, very exciting, and it was a really nice way to end Zoe's show career. So that's Zoe, we love her. We've never owned a goat this long. We've owned goats for, 15 years or 14 years I can't remember since 2006 so 15 years we've owned goats and Zoe's been with us since 2009 so we love her and she's gonna live forever that's what I keep telling her so just gotta get this lice under control I'll show you what she's doing. Zoe, you itching on the hay? I don't know if you'll be able to see it. But that right there. Let me see. Come on, focus. That is what the lice looks like. Hey, who wants some marigold? Hardy? Sandy? We just made the soap that's, that we, we just made soap that's, called Sandy Beaches and it's inspired by our Sandy Girl. Ah. Are you guys not done? Should I get you more? Marigold. That's enough. She is so cute with such a little pill. But who's perfect? It's Sandy. Yes. Oh my goodness, baby boy. Are you wanting your food? Do you want to lick this? Look at his lips. They're so cute. He's got a little spot on his lip, if you can't tell. Here was the greatest disappointment about Magic. We bought Magic's mom, Justina, best horse to ever walk the face of the earth. She was 17 years old and she was pregnant, very, very pregnant with Magic. And she was bred to a, um, what was he, a half, so he's a national show horse, which means he's half saddlebred, half Arabian. And he was um, pinto colored, so he was, he had spots. So we were hoping to get a spotted filly, so a spotted girl. 
And when Magic was born, he was a solid brown chestnut boy. <laughs> so the opposite of what we wanted. But he does have that one spot on his nose. And uh, we do really love him. He is really rotten sometimes though. Because he is so much more capable than we are. Put our new chickens in. And it's very cute. A friend of ours gave it to us. Let's see, how do I do this? Ooh, okay, here we go. So there's two little roosts, some nesting boxes, and lots of ventilation. And we're gonna put it on oh, this is nice. A little tray so you can just pull out the poop. So nice. I don't know how many can um realistically live in here um, and I'm not sure how we're going to let them be free range and keep the big chickens out if that makes sense because we're worried we we did get one silky two bantam Easter eggers I hope I'm saying that right is it bantam or banty anyway we did get three small chickens and for normal sized chickens. So in the end, we're hoping the big chickens can just go with the other big chickens, but we'll have three really tiny chickens. One of them hopefully being our rooster, our little silky rooster. But knowing our luck, it'll just be a girl. The one time we want a boy, it'll be a girl. Look at these flowers. They are so pretty. And this rose bush we've had since basically we moved here. So for 15, 16 years, and it is finally looking nice. And look at all of the chickens up here in the garden. Oh, the flower garden. I love the irises, they're very pretty.